<laughs> there it Welcome is. Welcome everybody to another Wine and Comics pairing show. I'm Dave. I'm Dallas. Yes. Cheers, I'm everybody. Kenrick. And today we have a yeah, and Kenrick. We have a very special <laughs> guest. I was just going to say Kenrick Regan, uh, the creator of Supernatural Baby Detective. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But first, <laughs> let's play our schnazzy schnazzy. <laughs> Kenrick, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a it's been a stressful week, but it's it's yes. You know, hopefully it's just gonna ramp up a little bit and then be even better once once you know funding happens. That's what that's, that's right. the goal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And this is for everyone uh, who's watching. This is a Kickstarter for Supernatural Baby Detective. And this is Kenrick's very first Kickstarter, correct? It is. Yes. Okay. Yes. So he's actually doing pretty good. He's stressed um, because, you know, it didn't fund overnight, which let's right. face it, we all deep down, <laughs> we're aware of the reality. We're ready for the reality. Yep. But then deep down, we always think, oh, but everyone's going to love That's this. Right. And That's it's right. just going to fund in 24 hours. And if it doesn't, what's wrong with my work? What's wrong with this? Something must be wrong. And it, it's your first Kickstarter. People got to find I, I you. I know my big become fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know my biggest problem. And actually, I sent you the link, and you gave me some great advice. You're like, "Hey, man, look at Cthulhu. It's not. It's not quite like it was a year ago." Which I had no idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had nothing to. I, I right. didn't know that right. other people were doing There's all these still a Cthulhu, lot of Cthulhu projects. On Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I. But I do think it's not like it used to be. A Cthulhu was just sort of like you're in like Flynn, like you have a Cthulhu book and you're like, boom, you're getting oh, funded because everyone was coming for Cthulhu. And then I yeah. think it just hit the saturation point where everyone's like, yeah, okay, I have like 50 Cthulhu Kickstarter comics and role-playing games and possibly video games. I'm not a video gamer these days, but I'm, I'm sure they exist out there. And it's just sort of, and merchandise and, and plushies yeah, yeah. and everything being kickstarted. And it just got to the point where I know for me, I started clawing back. If it wasn't a Cthulhu book, I was already committed to and it was you know issue four five six the second third graph novel right. whatever it was i'm like all right i've, like I've already invested invades. i'm gonna continue <laughs> exactly yeah. but yeah, if yeah. there's gonna be a fourth one i'm in on that but the new ones i really so there's a a publisher on kickstarter blue fox comics i don't know if you're they're based out of the uk and they do they, they do like two oh, or yeah. three or blue more fox. kickstarters every year um, oh, yeah, one of our guests brought a Blue Fox comic. Uh, yes. Richard, Richard Fairbrain, Richard, Richard. Um, brought oh, nice. on a Blue Fox comic on, that he showcased. And I was like, oh, hey, Blue Fox. Um, and they do straight up, it's not the only thing they do, but one of the things they do is straight up Lovecraft adaptations. So mm -hmm. HP Lovecrafts, whatever the short uh, story yeah. is, and they'll do a mini series. And it's funny because they just did a poll, like, which next issue should we do on Kickstarter? And they gave, and the, one of them was a Lovecraft uh, adaptation. And it actually won the poll. I was very disappointed because I didn't vote. I voted last for it. I was, I was like, no more Lovecraft. God damn it. I want all your other books. Um, well, but it still won the poll. So it, there's still yeah. interest out there. It's still, it's, yeah, it's there's still interest. Out. Mine is, is I'm using Cthulhu as a backdrop. You're never going to fight right. Cthulhu because I right. use them well, the way. Never say never. <laughs> you never say never, but you know if you read if you've read the H.P. Lovecraft stuff, you don't actually ever go toe to toe with Cthulhu, right? You yeah, know, right. and I kind of I just needed something as a back to explain some of the supernaturalness of the book, and so I I've written or written have read H.P. Lovecraft since I was a kid. You know, when I first heard Metallica's "Ride the Lightning" album, they had "Call of Cthulhu" on it. And right. I didn't know what that was. And my brother goes, oh, that's this. It's this whole mythos. Da, 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 da. And he right. explained it all to me. And I was like, oh. And then I went to the library, found some stuff, read it. And so I've always been like, I knew who he was. Um, right. Well, cool. I, think, I think the mythos is our generation because that like yeah. Lovecraft never had a mythos. He never wrote a mythos for yeah. any of these things. He, there was almost never a repetition of a creature or a thing or a name. I think like I think it's very sparse. Like the times you actually see a name or an idea repeated, it, there are themes that are repeated constantly in Lovecraft yeah. um, and yeah. a style. But the mythos is something we once it all became public domain, we all picked up that ball. Love <laughs> and would fiction, be a baby. And and roll, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was a he was a great, right? horrible human being. 
Oh yeah, yeah. And a horrible yeah. human being, but he was a kid, great, right? I mean, he's just a weird writer. I don't even know if he's oh, a yeah. great he's, writer. He's, he's one of those never meet your heroes kind of guys. 100%. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. He's definitely prolific. Amazing. I don't know. I don't know if he was great, but he, you know, he he painted a pretty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pra- painted a he pretty was a one note. Wow. He was one note. He was a one trick pony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just needed something to help with uh bring in a supernatural click. Yeah. And that's that's the only reason why I used it. And if I if I would have done an ounce of research, I probably <laughs> would have just created my own gods right. and creatures in the back end. Right. You know what I mean? Um but it's cool. I mean, I do think it's, I think it works really well. And we're going to talk about, you know, the book itself here in just a little yeah. bit. Um, I do think, because me and Dallas were able to get uh, our hands on, uh, Kenrick very graciously sent us a review mm-hmm. copy to read yeah. before this uh, recording. So, you know, I do totally think draft. Do, like, total draft. Well, except, well, the le- I think the lettering is a draft, but the art is done. Um, right. the, com- the writing is done. Like it's yep. very close to being done, folks. Um, yep. yep. So we can we can yep. vouch for that. It is like the starking magic hasn't percent. happened on it yet at that point. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. but I do think the Cthulhu, the way you put it in there, like it works beautifully. I wouldn't oh, actually. I think it's a good idea. I wouldn't necessarily change it, even though if you came up with your own thing, obviously you have. Well, it's it's public domain. You have merchandising options even with Cthulhu. <laughs> and like yeah. I said, yeah. it's still the interest is still alive. It's not gone yeah. gone. So I, I do think I have a feeling think there's it. some Yeah. Sorry. I have a feeling there's some characters that come out in the second and in the third issue that will be more popular. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? With 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 people. And mm-hmm. I think that's that's gonna be because this is really just setting up the world and sets mm-hmm. up why it's called what it's called and, and where it's where it's going. And you kinda you right. get that in this book which is good yes yes and we'll we'll talk because i'll show images uh, when we start talking about the book proper um but cool. the way you set it up for where issue number two is going and what that might be mm. about we'll, we'll talk a little more at length about that but i i was very intrigued because it's the bunny mask killer which we will talk about a little bit more <laughs> when we actually get to the issue see that was my so part of my advice i gave to kendrick is i'm like get that bunny mask killer up there front and center i'm like ding, that's ding, a little ding, more ding, right ding, i'm ding. like that's what i'm like the cthulhu thing i mean like people will see that cover and those who are interested will go for it 100 percent. but i'm like yeah. this is the artist of the interiors and he did this yep. this nice little graphic that i was like it's ram is awesome perfectly as your promo and then that bunny mask with the family portrait right now i'm like see that's yeah, intriguing that exactly. was for me that's the thing that drew me into it whereas the cthulhu thing i had that knee jerk where i'm at with cthulhu right now where i had that knee jerk <laughs> like oh fuck cthulhu yeah I just and i totally understood I what you were saying excited. <laughs> yeah right when you when your when your email came in i was reading i'm like oh that makes sense i totally get what you're saying and then what i saw all because when i launched it and then i started going through it and i really got invested into the community because we're both part of um we had a great conversation today about artists and copyrights right. and all that. And right. I felt like it became yours and I conversation more than who started it. <laughs> than the guy who started laugh. it. Yeah. Yeah. Usually the way. But, <laughs> yeah. but I thought it was interesting because I was like, but the community, the point is the community is very, um, they, they bring everybody in. It's awesome. Mm. Yes. Mm. And so yes. when I found the community, started talking to everybody, um, just kind of put myself out there and then really started doing a lot of research the amount of Cthulhu projects and the amount of stuff I was, uh, I was like, Oh, and I, and I yeah. had written, I had designed. So that uh, main cover is by Aladdin Alamani out of Cairo, Egypt. And he does, right. Right. he does a lot of different things, but that, but he did this image that was, it looked like a uh, merman from He-Man. Mm-hmm. Oh, but it was yeah, really yeah. realistic. And I'm like, oh, I like, right. I want the realism and I want Cthulhu right. holding a baby with the oh, fedora. Yes, and he, yes. and he was like, oh, but this is all before I did the research. And right. so, cause to me, <laughs> that, that, that cover, that was just a cool um, image, right? <laughs> it was a cool image and it, it really fits what, what's happening in a lot of ways. It does. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, that's what I wanted. And then I started going through and the amount of, I, I always want to be on the cusp right on the fringe of things that, right, that are right. different not so coming like, in the back end yeah uh, yeah. yeah 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 and yeah, and, yeah. and i'm terrible at coming in the back end which sounds <laughs> terrible but you know what i mean <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> i'm always late to the party let's put it that way <laughs> there you go that's, yes, there you go there <laughs> clean you go. it up clean <laughs> it up let's <laughs> in you let's in you endo in that one um yeah 
Yeah, I, I, and I think that it is, I mean, it's one of the problems with creating because you create in a silo, right? I mean, you're in your, it's yeah. just you in your own head, you and your, you might have a creative team, but that's still a very small team. You know, that's like a handful of people at best. And then you, then you, I think the, for creatives, our instinct is to just silo ourselves until we're ready, right? Yeah. Until yeah. it's ready and until everything, and we're not going, we don't want to get influenced. We don't want to influence yep. others. We don't want to go out. And, but the problem is, is technically you probably should be doing a lot of this like months and months yes. and months that and months, be if not part like of a the year process. beforehand. That is bad. Right. Yeah. But it's, yeah. we're terrible at it. We are hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it's lesson learned. I mean, I have a mentor yeah. and him and I went through it and, and, um, and he was great, you know, and we went through a lot of stuff and he goes, OK, let's do this. Let's wait until it's as perfect as it can be before we start putting things out. And I think he's right on a lot of things. But I mm -hmm. think when it came to I think anytime you're using anything from the public domain, you probably want to get out there yeah. and, and look yeah. around yeah. first to see how much is people using right. it. It's like Absolutely. the fairy tale stuff, you know, right. It's in the public right. domain. And then he puts it back. I don't know. I part of that's kind of weird to me because he. Right, right. Well, I learned in. recently, right, with the uh, Cthulhu Invades Neverland, which was the latest Cthulhu Invades graphic yeah. novel that uh, Travis yeah. did. And I only learned recently people, the word of mouth was like, oh, Neverland isn't popular. Hmm. And I was like, huh? Since what? when? But but yeah. apparently that is a thing, like compared to the other, like when he did Wonderland, when he did Oz, those are apparently vastly more popular than Neverland, which was news to me. But I'm like, popular in terms of sales I'm or reception? Both, like people who actually like Never, like not that many people are big fans of the Neverland huh. concept universe. A lot of people, for whatever reason, huh. are like, "No, nah, fuck Peter Pan, fuck those Lost Boys and Captain <laughs> Hook. We hate that shit." Like, and, and I, I talked to, uh, yeah, and so when I started talking to people about it, they were like, "Oh yeah, they don't like the Never Growing Up and all. It's it's kind of like." toxic masculinity with peter pan and all the lost uh, boys and like okay. how they how they behave and they right. don't but they're all kind of jerks they're Something's not really a little really overthought of people <laughs> sometimes are a little overthought of but i will agree it's, i mean i think that is the point of the story is it shows kind of lord of the fliesy where it's like peter pan and the lost That's, boys yes the fact yes. that they refuse to grow up does kind of make them little twerps they're Precise. not yeah. the greatest like tinkerbell is probably the nicest not really the disney version of tinkerbell so much but in the original stories like she's kind of the most responsible yeah. adult character even though she's the smallest and technically right. the tiniest and yet she has she's the probably most, the like, oldest trying, right Probably the oldest. I mean, I don't think we ever really get an age on her. Like, you know, that's one of those things that's yeah. just kind of up to the reader to decide for themselves. But the kids, and same with the Windy, the darlings, like, because they are actual children that will grow up, they're always, they're the ones struggling with their own moral compass throughout the whole thing, deciding whether this is, this Neverland thing is for them or not. And in the end, they decide it's not. Right. Um, right. So, so there are the voices of, the of reason. Story. And usually those voices right. are, you know, the smallest. I mean, that's the kind of the parable of the. Of the there you go. Piece. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, apparently a lot of people are just turned off by Neverland compared. Yeah. That's so weird. I had no idea. They... Exactly. So it's one of those things where I was, that was news to me too. And I was like, huh. But I'm glad I know that before I decided to make a Neverland anything because going in at least knowing <laughs> how much bandwidth you really got with people, yeah, you know, yeah. how much traction you've got. Um, and well, knowing that... that doing a Neverland, if it's your passion, do it. There are fans. There's yeah. just not as many. Yeah. It's limited. Yeah. Well, yeah. luckily after this one, this, this is four issues. So this is the first issue. Okay. We have three more. I already, the second one's already fully written okay. and art starts soon. Luckily my artist oh, cool. Ram Sandoval uh, loves the project and he, and he's um, dedicated Riding to stay. Right yeah. Like which that. is great. Yeah. And his, and his, you saw his style. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I, 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 it's unique. And he's in the vein of Mignola to me. There's a, I, I see a lot of Mignola in his, in his okay, artwork. Interesting. I yeah. yeah. I can't not, that. When, not when exactly, the but stuff. in the same genre. When you right. get to the action right. sort of horror stuff. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, um, but he takes direction so well. Every page, okay. every panel we work together on. And he, you know what I mean? And he would bring it and he would say, okay, this is what I did. And he'd give me two, three pages at a time. Boom, 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 oh. boom. And it was like, okay, this is cool. Can you change this? Can you do that? This is what I'm seeing in my head when I wrote that panel. Right. And 
Um, and then I would give them a lot of freedom too, though. Like the whole scene, if you go to uh, the Kickstarter and you look at the preview that I put on there, that whole three page scene is all Ram. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Which is, which is yeah, cool. Yeah. He had the concept. I told him the dialogue, but he did the rest. He all was right. like, I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. The pacing and all and that he, was all him. Yeah. yeah. And you could kind of see his uh, Pokemon influence. I feel like in the yes. old man. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, when I was going to say, great. he, like, I, I do see the Magnolia, especially early Magnolia. Like, Magnolia kind of went yeah. on to to really solidify his style later, like, in his Dark Horse days. But yeah. um, when he was doing kind of his earlier work for, like, the big two and whatnot and trying to do superheroes and whatnot, it was halfway to what his style kind of became. And you can see elements of it in there, but it really yeah. it didn't become that style fully until a little bit later. And yeah, I can see that in Ram right now. Where, it, and by the way, it, it, is it? I, I want to call him Ram. I probably shouldn't. Um, does he yeah. not? He probably does not go by a shortened name, or does he? No, he does go by Ram. So when okay. we talk, when we okay. talk on the phone, he's in the Yucatan. So when we get on the phone and we're talking, we're going over things, or you know, on Zoom, um, he, I, I just call him Ram. And but professionally, he always goes by Ramses. Okay, Ramses, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Um, Awesome. That's actually so, the yeah, first, first that... uh, uh, pronunciation uh, I've heard of that word <laughs> in that way. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, I usually hear Ramses. Uh, ah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Now that yeah. I said it, I'll probably be wrong and he'll be like, it is Ramses. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like, I just never wanted to correct you <laughs> all this time, which is usually the way, right? You paid me. I don't um, want to correct you. No. <laughs> exactly. All right. Now, so we try to keep the team very get... tight. <laughs> yes. So before we get uh, into the comic comic proper, mm -hmm. talk about yourself a little bit, just yes. in terms of this is your first Kickstarter. Is it your yep. first comic as a whole? And uh, as a writer, as a creator, is this also your very first work? Um, yes. In, um, probably in terms of the public seeing it, I'm assuming. But so this is actually been... my second uh, okay, thing. My first thing was it an anthology. Okay, perfect. Right, sorry. Um, so talk about that. And yeah, tell us, like, what got you into writing? What made you want to do comics? And what have you done leading up to this? Yeah. So um, in the public sector, I have been doing, I actually have my own podcast called Spoiler Country. And we've been oh, on yes, the yes. air since 2017. And my partner there, John, did an anthology called the Ein's Anthology, uh, which was pretty popular. It did, it did really well on Kickstarter. He had some issues with shipping at the end, okay. um, but I think he fixed not all uncommon, that. It, not uncommon, not well, uncommon. Well, <laughs> dude, he had a printer, right? And he used a, uh, into, like he used a very small printer, mm -hmm. small company, like a mom and pop shop. They gave him this ridiculous price and then he commits to them. Ridiculous he signs a contract. High or low, high or low price, ridiculous. High, low price. Okay. Low, low price. So he set all of his, all of his pricing Based on the Kickstarter on was to this. Oh yeah. yeah had a great, oh, yeah. he had, yeah. And then they went bankrupt and they just ceased communicate. Didn't even tell him that they went bankrupt, ceased communication. He's a third of a, or he's two thirds of his way through his Kickstarter oh, and everything oh. went thing. And then one of the other oh. guys contacted him and said, Hey, I'm starting my own company. I'm going to honor all this. That was the only communication oh. he got from the guy. <laughs> so it never came and so oh, it took him a long time to get everything back yeah. to be able to you know because he had a he had to pay a ton out of pocket because right right it just yeah i feel bad for him and i'm sure a lot of people were yes. mad at him but he oh, he, yes. he he got everybody taken care of that's what good. matters good, that's good, good. good, good. It, it, that is what matters even if it takes a touch of time i mean yeah you know financial reality is financial reality um yeah especially something like that where that's a tough one because you bank on what you've been told, right? And it was a company. I mean, as small as the company was, it was a real company. It's yep. not like it was your best friend who's like, I can print these in my basement. I'll do it for 200 bucks. And you're like, yep. okay, guy, you should not have, you should not have gone yeah. for that. <laughs> you know, or you can't even pay anyway. for paper for that much. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> no, these guys are great. Yeah. That, that is a tough story. They were supposed to be great, but they just ended up. Yeah. Everything just went, went awry, but yeah. He had an anthology called the Ein's Anthology about this family that were demon hunters or demons themselves for throughout all of time, right? And they have always been in and around and they and 
So every story was based on them. I did a short story called Nancy Ein's Krampus Killer. And you can actually Google it <laughs> and it'll come up. And I made, he didn't have, it was coming out around the holidays, but he didn't have a holiday story. And I'm like, ah, oh, you do, you need a holiday nice. story in nice. here. And yes. so I took the last, I took a character that, no one th- that nobody had. I've always written in college and, you know, when I was in Boy Scouts, we go on your camping trips. I was always the, the kid that told all the stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I always did all this stuff. I'd always have a, a wild imagination. So I was like, I'm going to write this, this out. And I did, I read Neil Gaiman's How to Write Comics. And I went through that. And then I got, it was only three pages. So I built it all out. And he, and he told me, he goes, look, I'm not going to put it in if it doesn't, if it's not to the caliber of everybody else's. Hey man, I totally understand it. Don't even feel offended, but I wanted to make it to where he couldn't say no. So <laughs> I went and hired Scott Godleski. Scott Godleski is an amazing artist who works for DC. He works for Marvel. Okay. He's worked for image. This guy top 10, easily top 10 okay. of going on right now. Hired Scott okay. to do my three pages. It looks fantastic. Right. So I gave him this fully formed three page story with got with DC superhero art based on this this secret agent girl that works for Santa Claus that kills Krampus that is hunting kids down every year. Give it to him. And he's like, God dang it. I should have told you to do six. <laughs> six or 12 yep. pages. I'm like, I could have given yep. you 24 yeah. of this. Well, I was going to so say, it sounds like three pages is is light. You know, for yeah, something It was like really that. light. Like, especially the way you just described it. I was like, good God. That is... Yeah. Um, yeah. A mutual friend of mine just did a two-page story in one of the Cthulhu Invades. Uh, the latest yeah. one in Neverland. And like... I wouldn't even know story. how to begin I'm just there. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, well, he was like, that was the hardest part. Is he's like, story. how do you tell a two-page story? And I'm like... I did one I scene. there, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I just exactly. did one scene. Opening up with kids out on Christmas Eve, way past yeah. their bedtime, smoking, drinking. It was 1991, so they listened to Pearl Jam 10. Of course. And Nancy's up on the on a, on a Brit, on a building with a sniper rifle and scope. Santa Claus is in her ear. And you see Krampus coming down the thing. He's snatching, he snatches the kids, puts them in in his satchel. He's gonna get, he's gonna take him back, and she shoots him in the head. And the little discord between her and Santa happens. That's the complete scene. And that's it. now tell me you've expanded this Nancy t- uh, tale. Because I want it to needs because expansion. Yeah, I want to because I didn't realize because Johnny didn't tell me that that was his most one that everybody kept calling him and saying, Hey, I believe it. are we going to have more Nancy? And I was like, it kind of yeah. makes sense. Cause Scott made her awesome. Yeah. She looks fantastic. She's yeah. athletic looking, not because I'm not a big fan of huge tits yeah. and just this right. outlandish look. I, I just, right. I want my, I want my characters to be more like I could actually meet that person and they dress appropriately. And I don't mean appropriately, like I'm not into to whatever. what they're doing. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> to what they're doing. It just, I want it to make sense as much as right. it can, being that it's a comic book. Right. But, She's not in an ice skating outfit, you know. <laughs> right, right. People, yeah. Not to say I didn't love Lady She's Death older. when I was 15, you know. <laughs> but I wanted her to I be. I also haven't continued to follow what Brian Polito is doing, even though he's still going to this day. Yeah. Um, Coffin Comics, man. Successfully. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, um, they cracked no, the Kickstarter I, I, I walked away after a while. Yes, they did. <laughs> yeah. But also, I think there are certain, like, it's part of the thing is that when you already have an existing fan base, like a big existing fan oh, base, yeah. they will it's come It's easy to, to pop over. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he told all these people, I like, had asked him, hey, are you going to do more? So now that I'm doing podcasts, I'm finding out that, oh, I read that. That was my favorite one. Are you doing more? Well, it looks like we're going to do more. Job job is, <laughs> yeah. And we can do a one shot every Christmas. That, you know, I think even that's, if we just that put may it be, digital. that may be your starting point. I think you yeah. might build yeah. a great, you know, holiday yes. community around that IP. For sure. And yeah. the readership I of one will feed into the readership of the other. So absolutely. Supernatural Baby Detective is going to do nothing but benefit from that. So, yeah. Yep. yeah yep. So we put that out. That got some good reviews. And yeah. And, and then I've written like quite a few short stories and stuff that I've never released. You know, I've tried to, I've, 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 I'm the, quintessential person that has 30 novels on their hard drive that never get past the first chapter. Yeah. 
See, I'm pointing. Yeah, I was, gonna, I, was, I was just about to look. point that way. Yeah. <laughs> that way and, yeah. and I'm the guy with the, with 30 that are also complete that I refuse to show anyone. <laughs> yes, but that's better. Agree. Agree. I'm so, like, yeah. He can send them. I, he can send them to me anytime he wants, and he's like, uh huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. he's like I'm he's working on it. Models. I'm still. I want to do. You're I want to do another of pass. My words. You know? yeah. Yes, I want to do another this, pass. It's always another pass. <laughs> do another. Pass. I got to edit some more. I got to trim. I got to trim. I got to trim. It's true. Right. <laughs> it's true. So then this one came up. I was on. I I had. I think it was. I want to say it was Michael Tanner was on, and we're we were talking on the podcast. And I'm a big fan of just nonsensical words like squirrel nut zipper pancakes right oh, yeah. Yeah. jam together don't mean nothing dr seuss in it as much as you can because it's right. fun and we're talking about some i said supernatural baby detective because i love hellboy i love constantine i love that genre of hard-boiled supernat adding in the supernatural yeah. uh night stalkers from the 1970s that tv show uh-huh. loved it yeah. i still love it and I was like, you know what? There's something there. There's, I just, it just stuck with me, something there. And I thought in my mind that I was going to write, look who's talking with the supernatural twist, right. you know? And then something else, something very different came out. And I was like, I'm <laughs> okay, going to do this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then I did it. It was kind of funny too, because I started yeah. in February. This is weird. I started in February, had a heart attack in March. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've lost almost 70 pounds since February, wow. since March. Cause I had a heart attack Incredible. and then I get out, I, uh, they put two stents in, not a serious, I mean, every heart attack serious, but not a massive, right, right, right. Right. you know, they didn't crack the chest. They went through my arm, put two stents in, get out of surgery. Uh, like a day later, they're like, Oh, by the way, you have type two diabetes. I'm like, sweet. So awesome. I ate myself to a heart attack and right. diabetes. I am pitching a thousand. Good shape. I'm in yeah. the, yeah. I'm in the middle of creating this thing. I'm talking to Ram every day. And then all of a sudden he doesn't hear from me for three days. I don't even, I don't think he even knows that I had the heart attack. I don't think I've ever told him. And <laughs> yeah, get through everything. And then Ramsey's you know, watch just, this show. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send it to him. You heard it here. First. If you ever wanted Literally. to know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> Set everything up. Gave, you know, anyways, we worked with them, got everything done uh, in the middle of it. Uh, then I just kind of went on a health journey. So I've cut all the sugar out. I mean, this is the most sugar I'm having right now, you know, in a long time. And so I cut sugar out, carbs out, got down. I'm, I was at 265, weighed myself this morning. I'm at 201. Nice, I'm going to be nice. taking pictures. When I hit 199, Congrats, I'll be taking pictures of that yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to actually get back into the hundreds. Yeah. Congrats. So, but it's been kind of this weird, like multi- step journey or this parallel journey of putting this thing together and getting back into health, but then having something to focus on mm, yes. that I really am passionate about and love. And I've always been a dork for comic books. I, I love them. I mean, I, I, yeah. I love them. And yeah. yeah. And so putting this together has been, um, yeah, one of the most biggest accomplishments of my life, yeah. which is yes. weird to say. Congrats yeah. all around. Actually, that makes, oh, that thanks, makes 100%. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the uh, being comic fans ourselves and also having our very first Kickstarter dropping in October. Mm. Not Ooh, I'm excited for you guys. Created. Thank you. Um, now, I'm just like you, as we were saying before, though, there's a part of me that's like, everyone's going to love this. And there's the part of me that's like, it's our first, like, be fucking ready, <laughs> you know, have yeah. it all tempered and, and be ready to go. But it's not even, it's an old out of print comic from yeah, the 80s and yeah. 90s, been out of print since the 90s. It's actually one we've and been I've, pushing for about two, de- about a decade. Oh we personally have been nice. pushing this. It's thing one of like my top five comics of all time. Which one is it? Which one is it? It's called Armageddon, Armageddon Quest. Quest. No one has heard of it. No one has you, read it. You have it's a copy one of those things. No one people. Uh, What's that thing I can't believe I haven't heard of it. I, I was, that on bud, I, was that in the Bud Plant catalog? It had bud to be. Bud Plant catalog. Bud maybe catalog. it was. Uh, so it was published ever so briefly by Sirius yes. Publishing. If you remember them from the '90s, S I R I U S. They did like Dawn yep. and uh, Poison Elves yep. and things like that. Um, and they picked this up and they published the whole series in three graphic novels right before they went out of business and Ugh. like completely tanked. So there were like some copies. I got my hands on the copies. I was in, it was the nineties. I was like still in high school. I read it's, 
a little shy of 900 pages, the whole work. And oh, I read it all lot. in one family car trip, uh, like in one <laughs> sitting. And I like just, and it's like mature readers, not safe for work, not in the usual way. It's, it's in a very, right. uh, it, this guy has not a very Faustian unique way. voice. Uh, but uh, yeah, not quite Faust. It's like there, there is a lot of sex and nudity and violence, but it, it's a very unique work. And it blew my mind wide open of like what comics could do and the type of story and That's how cool. you could tell it and the voice you could tell it in. Yeah. And so whenever, you know, when people ask you like top three comics of all time for you, and it sucks because this is always one of my top three comics of all time. And fucking no one knows about <laughs> no it. One. Like no literally one. nobody knows about it. Nobody <laughs> even knows, you know, because sometimes you're even like, ooh, I've always wanted to read that. It's not even that. It's literally yeah. like just. They blink, they just you're stare blank. blankly yeah. at you and you're like, yeah, this is not a comic. So we really want to bring it to a new audience and we think Kickstarter is cool. a vehicle for it. So we're very excited, but we're also, we're about to be in your shoes. So yeah. we, uh, yeah, we, we, a lot of empathy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's kind of fun, we're man. It's going kind of through, fun. We're about to do it, but it's so much yeah. fun. And we feel like it, this is something that is, we've been building towards for a long, long time. We've wanted mm -hmm. to do this. We've, you know, had to work it out with the original creator, get him involved. Make sure dotting our I's, crossing our T's, the pre-launch page should be up within a week. And then we're going to nice. have a couple of weeks of that. And probably mid-October, we'll, we'll launch it for real. Sometime in, in October, we want to do it because it's got that Halloween-y vibe it to it. And we definitely want to be a part of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so it's a. The, anyways, the point of all that, you said it's like one of the big hallmarks of your life. And I'm like, no, I feel you. It absolutely, yeah. just even approaching ours we feel you a hundred percent on that. It's a huge yeah. undertaking. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a whirlwind. It's been a whirlwind and just to get it out and to get it, everything done. I just, you know, I love Ram's art and I love Ram. He's such a great yeah. guy. I just, I, mm -hmm. that's the only thing I regret is I'm not able to do that. I'm not able yeah. to give yes. voice to my, to my, right. to my writing. Ooh, um, ooh. Right. Well, that, oh, oh, you mean to do the art? I thought you were going somewhere else there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, have, I have tons of ideas, so I'm not worried about that. I, I you know, we we started our own um, publishing because of the amount of stories that between Johnny and I have that we're just like we got to have our own mm. and then go from there. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the era too. I mean, more so. You know, there was the black and white explosion in the 80s and early 90s yeah. where like so many people were able to get their work out there just through the independent distributors and actually sell a shit ton of copies. One another old school creator. I don't know if you've ever heard of this comic either. Most people haven't. It was called Ultra Klutz back in no, the um, mid 80s to mid 90s. And he even they even got collected <laughs> in trade paperbacks that were like the Cerebus phone book size trade mm -hmm. paperbacks. Yeah. Um and it started as a parody of Ultraman, but grew just like Cerebus was a parody of Conan the Barbarian, if you remember that yeah. way back in the oh, day. Yeah. Um, oh, and yeah. then just like Cerebus grew into its own little thing and epic and real story that, he, so this guy, I talked to the creator and uh, uh, Jeff Nicholson is his name. And he was basically like the first issue of Ultra Cuts sold something like 300,000 copies. Wow, that's crazy. Yes. Because that's the kind of what moved in the black and white indies in the 80s. Yeah. Okay. That was the yeah. kind of market they were dealing with. And right nowadays, it's like yeah. if you move a thousand yeah. copies, you're doing great. Yeah. You know, yeah. let alone 300,000 yeah. copies. And it's mind blowing that's how nice. shifts, things have shifted and things have changed. So now I think going to find your own audience you're probably not even going to do much better going through uh, a yeah. direct market or trying to get into, like, it's, I mean, it's nice to see your thing in comic shops, but the number of units you can move and number of yeah. regular readers you can secure you, is probably, it's easier to do it and you can do it more directly through something like crowdfunding and through your own publishing yep. company. So yeah. It, well, it's well I really up. think, I, I really think that we're in a golden age of independence because the amount that's out there, the amount it's easier to get in Marvel and DC have stopped sharing their numbers because their numbers have gotten so bad in their sale. So, and you'll see like right. a lot of people on the, on, you know, doing the comics gate say they're blaming their storytelling. And I don't think it's so much that because independent sales are going up. I think it's just the amount of choices out there yeah. now are, yeah. are, are leveling that playing field, you right. know, and it's right. comics. Right. Who cares if they make Iceman gay? 
They yeah. can change it two months from now. I think people are also I think people <laughs> reboot the whole thing, reboot the character, yeah, reboot, reboot the, the series. Who cares? <laughs> right, right, right. Which they do Thomas. regularly all the time. Yeah, right. I think we've we'll, also reached that team. saturation point that we were talking about earlier in terms of comics. Like it just, yeah, the corporate machinery of it all is just so limiting, right. and yeah. uh, people are returning to that kind of outsidery what else you got like you know give me something right. new they want stories they want yeah. original stories want and stories. i feel That's like right. supernatural baby detective is original i might be having cthulhu on the cover but i guarantee you have not read a comic you like read this, read this right. story right. <laughs> no, i mean you true. use cthulhu no. as the uh, as the sort of you know inroad into this original kind of world, mm -hmm. world of yeah and and rabbit and rabbit yeah. face killer uh rabbit mask killer as i guess, I guess we'll call the it. easter bunny uh, he's, the easter bunny he's, killer he's yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Easter bunny. Him, and all uh, my in all my notes he's eb he's so i'll probably good. just keep it eb <laughs> yeah we need that guy for a uh, front and center for sure yeah that's good <laughs> i like i like hearing that because it's hard to tell because uh people that yeah, i've shown sure. i either get they can't wait They've read it. Where's yeah. issue two? I, I need to know what's happening, yeah. or yeah. it's just not for them. And that's, I, I'm okay with that. That's always, right? Yeah, is what it is. Yeah. Right, exactly. You know. um, stories are always going to connect or not connect with mm -hmm. each yeah. individual as it goes. Um, but this is a great segue. Let's actually take a look at the nice. Kickstarter page. And so let me share my screen here. Where is our super? I'm excited for your Kickstarter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We are too. Yeah. We, but we have a lot of work left to do. Like in those <laughs> leading up, we still have things, videos to edit and numbers to it's crunch. So to make much work. Sure we've got it. Yeah. Oh my god, it's, it's so, so much work. work. And if if I didn't have look at that, Danny is a backer. Isn't that nice, Danny? Quick, <laughs> fan for Ace Blade. Uh, if I didn't have the community that's there, and I had to do this on my own, I would have failed miserably. I had yeah. no less than five different people go over it. Travis Gibb, who he's probably sick of me thanking him because I like get on <laughs> messenger. I'm like, dude, I don't want to thank you enough. <laughs> and, but it's true. He sat on right. the phone with me on zoom. We went over the thing for two hours mm. going over each detail and what I needed to add and what I should yep. take away and all this stuff. Who does that? Mm. You know? So yeah. yes, you guys, no, you, you'll be great. Well, and I think, you know, the community thing, that's something I glommed on to maybe a year and a half ago or so, like just how important, because I was, a, a, I've been a Kickstarter backer for a long, long time. I think I started yeah. backing Kickstarter shit back in like 2010, like yeah. comics yeah. on Kickstarter. I think it was I my am first time too, around then. Yeah. Yeah. So I am literally, I just checked my numbers um, the other, like two or three days ago. I have backed. 1,180 oh. something successful comic Kickstarter oh, you win. at this point. You win hard. <laughs> yeah. You win he's, hands down. He's that guy. He's always I'm been that guy. That guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> but, 40. <laughs> but, for mi but for many, many years, I was the silent backer. Like yeah. I didn't interact yeah. with people. I wasn't, I was kind of like social media was not my thing. So I wasn't really on social media very much. And it was some point, maybe about two, two and a half total years ago, all told, I finally was like, you know what? I think I just sent a message to one or two creators and they were so thrilled to hear from someone and to get the feedback. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, why don't I do this more often? I back yeah. everything, but I just quietly consume it and don't become Engage. a part of anything. It's the engagement. Yeah. And so I yeah, started doing that, that, exactly. And that rolled into, and then doing this show was something that we only got the idea like about a year ago. And started pre-recording. Like we dropped our first episode in November of last year, so we're almost on our one-year anniversary. Um, but it was a quirky oh, idea. But we, we loved. Well, we both love wine. We both love comics. We were like, Shit, it's insane to, to put them together and make a show out of it. But fuck it, we're doing it. And it's going to take a while for people to be okay with it and even understand what the fuck it is. Oh, you guys are good anyway, including yeah. ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> including ourselves. Um, but it's all kind of dovetailed nicely into this first Kickstarter launching because now we're very like we've just we've been very interactive with people and we've been a part of that community and very supportive of that of other people's work and backing it uh shouting it out even long before we even did the show and then with yeah. the show we can take that one step further and now we feel like okay i think that's why I, I have a lot of confidence going into this is because of all the support you know i was super nervous actually reaching out to you on blue sky yeah you know, that's <laughs> that's where i got a hold of it because i watched your uh show with travis gibb and i'm like 
I've been doing podcasts since 2017 and we had our, our website, we had it to a point where we we're getting 130,000 people a month. Nice. And, but we were, we got, we over, we, we were overworked and you have yeah. to, yes. you got to run it like a business and that's not where we were doing it. And we didn't want to do that. We burnt out. We took a year off and now we're lucky to get 50. <laughs> Like literally, uh, I mean, you, you, right. you stop, you lose it. Right. So right. there's a lesson in there for sure. Yeah. 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 So when I watched your show, I thought you guys did an excellent job. You had a cool concept. You had fun. That's the thing. You and Dallas yes. pair well together, pun intended in a lot of ways, but you guys do. <laughs> yes, and you guys had a lot of fun. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to be nervous uh, thing. Because what if he sees my Kickstarter and say, Oh, fuck this guy. This is ridiculous. I don't want to talk to this, <laughs> which, which if you don't say nothing, then, th then I'd be like, okay, you know what? Respect. Right. Cause he didn't give me shit. Just didn't respond because that's not his thing. And, right. and that I can, cause I did that. You know what I mean? With, with my yeah, right, podcast, I don't respond yeah, yeah. cause I don't want to say anything negative, you yeah. know? Right. Right. Yeah. But you're that's like, my approach. Dude. That's my. That's actually my approach. Dave will find something great, something good to say, constructive. Yeah. I, you know, for me, I'm very much like, oh, he's been silent the entire episode. I wonder what that means. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, but it, you know, you you responded right away, and then and then you know we've been talking on on Facebook, and now I got to find Dallas on on Facebook because oh, you he's not on yeah, Facebook. <laughs> you, what, okay, what? so. Please, please I'm help me Facebook. pressure him. Please help me pressure him to getting Dude. the elf on Facebook. At least get on Messenger. At least get on Messenger. You don't have to do all the other stuff. Just on Messenger. You know why you want to get on Messenger? Because it's on your phone. It's on your computer. So you can be like, okay, yeah, I'm available. You know? Those Kendrick, he is just... going to be – Dallas, I will. So he's going to join Blue Sky – um, cause oh, I yeah. have an invite for you, Dallas. I'm, I'm saving it. Uh, and great, blue sky great. is like right now it's, it's, everyone isn't great. there. It's invite only. Yeah, it's it's beta, a little bit yeah. of a safer place. So that over Twitter, I don't no instant Twitter, messaging, which is weird though. Blue sky. <laughs> yes. But no instant message. Yeah. Right. No, DM. Yeah, no direct, like, which I didn't realize until you said there's no direct right. here. <laughs> right. Cause I was trying to respond to you and I was like, I, it's weird to just have it as a thread. So like, yeah. there has to be a better way to do it. Um, so then I was like, okay, let me post that I'm going to go find you on Facebook and then I will message you there. Um, yeah. but, but Facebook, Dallas will be on Facebook because we have a wine and comics. I will invite you to this, Kenrick, uh, yeah, after yeah. we record this. Uh, but we have a wine and comics pairing club um, on oh, nice. Facebook where we read two graphic novels a month and talk about it and have a live Zoom oh. meetup where we discuss the things that we read. And of course, pair it with beverages, wine yeah. for us. Yeah. But you know, if people don't drink wine, I'm like, have fun with it. Pair it with what you want. What do you think goes Dude, wrong? I live in What's Washington. You know how many about? different wines and beers are here? It's you know, ridiculous. So it's great much. wines coming out of Washington. Yes. Yep. And, yes. and the girl yeah. upstairs in November, is it November? No. Yeah, November is going to Napa Valley for the first time on a girl's trip. So I'm actually excited for it because yes. she's a big wine enthusiast where she's uh we have memberships to Ryan Patrick and we have membership to Longfellow and nice. uh, Long Shadow and Long Shadow. Um, yes. Matthews. Oh, nice. I have okay, yeah. yeah, I'm familiar with Matthews, but cool. Matthews. I mean, there's good. so oh, there's so many wineries. Um, oh, it, it's yeah. so funny. I went. I did my first trip to Paso Robles last year in the summer, um, 2022. And I, I was like, Paso Robles, that's a real up and coming like wine area. There are <laughs> Paso Robles alone, over 350 yeah. wineries um, in Paso Robles. Exactly. I'm just, just like, and it. that's not even as big as Napa Sonoma. Yeah. So it's just wow. like, I mean, and then there's Santa Barbara and there's Temecula and there's Lodi and there's Mendocino. And it just goes on and on and on. And then, of course, that's not even approaching Washington. My, and my family and huge. Um, we're very connected to Santa Barbara. My grandfather moved out to Newport in, out of out of Waltham, Massachusetts in 1935 oh, and nice. proceeded to buy a ton of Newport and Santa Barbara when they were still orange groves. Oh, oh very man. cool. Very yeah. cool. My, my own similar ish story to that is I discovered my mother's side of the family um, before she married my dad. They used to own Chateau Montalena. Uh, mm. which is the winery that put California on the map. On the They're map, the one that yeah. won 
the French blind awesome. tasting that like beat out yeah. all the. Now they owned it before it became a winery. To be fair, so <laughs> right. they owned it and sold it, and then it became the winery that put California on the map. But the it map. was the Chateau Montalena, and it was the family they owned it for a number of years. That's and cool. Like, so That's it's still like cool. The person. It's very cool. It's cool. And it's not that cool, but it's cool in the sense it's like, you know, the person who owned the magazine company that was sold, that was sold, that was right. sold and then became Marvel Comics. It's like, Ooh, that's really cool. <laughs> I mean, I own not timely. that cool. <laughs> right, exactly. There's some pedigree like, there, but none you can cash in cool. on. Right. <laughs> I sold it for $50. <laughs> right. And it's so funny. I, I had gotten into wine. I'd fallen into it. I'd become a total wine nerd. Never knew any of the, about this, anything about That's this. That's cool. And then like one day I was visiting my parents and my mom just sort of dropped it casually. And she's like, oh yeah, we used to own my Chateau Montalena. And I'm like, the fuck? And she just like dropped it as though like this little family, like factoid, like not even important. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Dude. wait. Wait, the? It, and then I looked it up and I found my great great grandfather and got his bio and I was like, holy fucking shit, it's real. So it was crazy. <laughs> it really happened. <laughs> Life makes more sense now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but Santa Barbara for me, that was my actually first wine territory that I ever That's cool. um, it was it was my gateway territory. It was the first one that I took a trip to quote unquote wine country. And actually, like, try because you know, I just bought grocery store wine and Trader yeah. Joe's wine, and yeah. you know, was trying to get into Two it and chuck. develop the palate. Two buck chuck, a little bit better than that, but honestly, not that much better <laughs> than that. Like, six ninety nine chuck, you know. So it was like it wasn't too <laughs> yeah, yeah. much higher, higher up the ladder. Um, and then over time, I was just like, wait, I live in California. What the fuck am I doing? I need to like, go yeah. somewhere and like take spend advantage some money. of this. And Santa Barbara was my first. Yeah. Yeah, you can spend some serious money. Oh, you can spend oh, some my crazy God. money. I but mean, yeah. wine is, that is the one is thing. What's amazing. You do, you actually don't. It's not necessary to. to spend a That's right. Well, money. you can do some and research and you can get some great ones that are You're absolutely 12 right. bucks. That's to be fair, I will say if you visit wine country, country, you have to spend. To be fair. No, you don't. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. Even in <laughs> Dallas, no, Dallas no. tastings don't go under $25 a taste. Taste oh, oh, no, you're going to the wrong place. Tastings, yeah. <laughs> you're going to the wrong places my friend we're, we're gonna it's road trip time. Uh, oh my <laughs> that's god that's fine but i'm just saying like just tell me when I'm, I'm, I'm on my way i want to do this road trip <laughs> well i know i was gonna say yeah, stop threatening do it road for trip, me like take me trip. drag me drag road me trip. kicking and streaming let's do this <laughs> yeah, yeah twist my arm please <laughs> um but in any event, so supernatural baby detective. <laughs> let's, let's actually uh, yeah, scroll down this. So it's this was one of, one of the things that I that I suggested to Kenrick when he reached out to me was actually this little image here. Is yeah. he had this down here? Is this bigger image with the? Uh, yep. bloody that was one of our first Easter. promo images. Yeah. Right, and it, that image sold me on great, on this when I saw this as a uh, Kickstarter campaign That's cool. page. Like I was looking and originally he actually had uh, this alternate cover right here. Yep. Here's the yeah. uh, more that's realistic. the main cover. Yeah, the main yeah. cover. So this is the, uh, oh, that's right. This is the main cover. The other one's the alternate. Um, yep. uh, there's a Ramsey's alternate down below. We'll, we'll see that yeah. in a minute. Um, but this one, this is Cthulhu or Cthulhu, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah. Um, and here's the the baby with the fedora. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and, and this is by the Aladdin... Uh, Alamani, yeah. Alamani, Alamani, Alamani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. And th and this image was the one he had up above, and I'm like, it's cool. It's a cool image. Yeah. But honestly, for me, it, it wasn't. Three years and then, ago, course, it would have been huge. It would have been huge. <laughs> that's, that's um, it also has this. Uh, one thing I like about this image is it really takes me back to. Did you ever see the the Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings uh, animated oh, yeah. movie? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you I know the, the, the riders, the black the black riders uh -huh. that always had that really grainy, realistic look because it was all mocap, like yeah. a yep. really early Retroscope. 70s version of mocap. Retroscope. Rotoscope. Um, but Rotoscope. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Rotoscope. And but they had this like the way they the way the grain the textures and everything are a lot like the textures on this cover. Uh -huh. So there is oh, a yeah, natural that's, good. that's right freakiness to mm -hmm. this whole thing where it just brought back those memories and that movie scared them shit out of me when i was a kid my dad kept trying to make me sit through that and when i was a child because he's like an animated yeah. movie and i'm like this is terrifying <laughs> i cannot watch this movie um I, I was okay with the uh there were the other animators that did the hobbit movie from that yep. same time period. Uh, -huh. yep. uh so yep. they were i was that was also that was a little they did scary the two towers and they did the, the hobbit tower. yep 
right, right, or uh, Return of the King and The Hobbit. Yeah, Return um, of the King, which is two towers Return and Return of the King, King together. Yeah, mm. exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of they kind of skipped most of the two towers and put a little yeah. cut. Yeah, um, but uh, but then in the, between them there was the Fellowship of the Ring story, which was done yep. by Ralph Bakshi. And yeah, that rotoscope effect where they and the way they did those black riders was so I mean, literally the Peter Jackson did some of those uh, Ralph Bakshi shots like frame for frame, like because yeah. you could tell he was a fan. He was like, no, yeah. that was yeah. a great way. Yeah, he admits that in a couple, in a couple of the documentaries. Things. Yeah. Yes. Um, but then this, yeah, the, the texture of this color and the look of it just brought that instantly back to mind. So I do love that, that about it. I think I think Horsley did the John Horsley right, did the colors on this. Yeah, no, it's okay. Oh, John okay. Horsley okay. did the colors yeah, yeah. on it, which is great. He did a great job. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And then you'll see though, here's here's where we get to Ramsey's art down below, which is the bunny mask was him as well, up above. Yep. And and here here's some of the um Oh, by yep. Ron Randall. Good job. There. Yeah, Ron yeah, Randall yeah, read yeah. the That's script. They cool. sent it to him. John and Ron are actually close friends. And uh -huh. um, he said, hey, I'm going to send this to, to Ron. Do you mind? I'm like, you want to send it to Ron Randall, one of the quintessential 80s artists of right. so many comic books that I read right. growing up? And, and, and no, on the Kickstarter side, ahead. Trekker these days, for anyone who's back in Trekker. That, that, which is amazing. Guy. Yep. I have actually a, an original Ron Randall print or original Ron Randall uh, page from one of his Supergirl runs. Oh, cool. And oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was 50 bucks. He sold it for 50 bucks. I'm like, mine, <laughs> I'm taking that. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. He read it. He loved it. He loved Ram's art. He thought it was original. And then he made that. And Ram got super excited because he'd never had somebody like Ron Produce take a design me. that he did. Okay. Nice. Right. I bet. I bet. Yep. That's very cool. Um, and here we go. Here's more of the um, sample pages. Yep. Of this is the internal Stark. pages. Yep. Yeah. Right. So you can and this see is this actual is lettering. Of... Starkings lettering yes, is the in, actual on these pages. Yes. And that is the okay. Richard Starkings who's lettering the comic, which is mm -hmm. uh, kind of insanity as well. That's, so, yeah. How, how, yeah. Richard yeah, Starkings, that, for people who don't happen? know. Yeah. So Richard <laughs> Starkings, who don't, um, my mentor uh, is very good friends with Richard. They're, they've been childhood friends. And he said, hey, you should read this book. I think this guy's on to something. And he sent it to him. Richard reached out to me, said, love the book, want to letter it. And people wow. who don't know, Richard Starkings worked with Alan Moore in the 80s. He yep. was the letterist of um, The Killing Joke, which to me is one of the books that I read. I was 13 years old when, when The Killing Joke came out. So that was one I bought off the newsstand or at the comic book store and, and changed my life <laughs> because I didn't know that a book could be that violent. Well, I read, but well, that's not true because I had read Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, yeah. but mm. I didn't know the adult content and, you know, because The Dark Knight Returns is very action. There's a lot of action in yeah. it. So, you know, and kind of horrorish in a lot of ways. Right. I mean, like it's kind of a horror book in a lot of ways right. uh, with the Joker. So it was. <laughs> I, I thought you said like, horrorish for a second. Yeah, <laughs> I did say horrorish. I, I was like, huh. horrorish as in huh. horror-ish. I don't remember those horror -ish. pages. Horror -ish. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> What pages are those? <laughs> Pick up but, a copy of that again. It, 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 but the killing joke kind of affected me in a way, even though yeah. I read it now. And it, 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 I'm actually not a biggest fan as I as I used to be, just because it doesn't yeah, speak the to me the same way. Big a fan uh, happens these days. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But when I was 13, 14, that book spoke yeah. to me. And so to have somebody who was side by side working on that book, working mm -hmm. on my book. I can't even, and he's, he's going to do all the books. Oh, so he's wow. doing all four issues. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That is, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, that's awesome. We did, we, we, uh, Dallas actually, uh, spotlighted elephant men, um, not that's too long one. ago on one of our episodes. So we, yeah. I mean, when I saw that in the credits on the Kickstarter too, I was like, Oh, Whoa. Okay, Seriously, Richard right? Starking is the letterer. That's like, and it's very, they don't make, they don't make a big deal about it. You just right. have it written on the credits, like as big as yeah. anything. And I'm like, I mean, that's fair. But at the same time, like, was that hard not to banner wave that? <laughs> it is hard because, well, because you don't know, I don't know how to banner wave it appropriately. I mean, it I would be like page two as... on my Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. But he thought it, that is Rams that you're showing now. 
Mm-hmm. And and we debated going back and forth. Do we make it the main cover? But the problem with this one, not that it's a problem, is that he hits all of the variant mm-hmm. needs, mm-hmm. right? The supernatural baby detective is a different font, doesn't use the mm-hmm. logo. Right. He is right. is doing an homage to EC to style. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, EC yeah. Comics, but then he's also homaging Iron Maiden's Killers album. That's a good cover. Oh. Yeah, I did not. That's I did not catch that. Image, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's great looking. Eb is is is, is uh, a character that when you read issue two, you're gonna have some feelings to what he went through, but at the same time, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna be like, "Wow, that guy is is off his rocker." So right. um, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was gonna say. I so, think he's original. You know. Wh- yeah. This this is a character that you you get to you de- he plays an integral part in issue number one. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but you don't learn anything about him in issue number one. So and yeah. where issue two leaves off suggests that you're going to learn a right. lot about him in issue two. So that and I will say that I thought was kind of a master stroke in terms of like if you had nice. to have a cliff a cliffhanger that wasn't a hundred percent. It's not like a literal cliffhanger. But you left it off at that point where I was like, ooh, not only has the whole setup for this comic, because issue number one is is pretty much the setup and se- yeah. setting up the setup, really. Um, and then you <laughs> arrive at the supernatural baby detective setup pretty much at the end. And then you get a hint that the next issue is also going to dive into mm-hmm. this Easter Bunny, whatever he is, killer, yeah. plainly. But, oh, but what else is he and why is he what he is? Um, and that was like, so both things you're just like left hanging and you're like, you definitely want more, more, more. So I do think no, anyone who reads this yeah, is fun. with you. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who reads issue number one is going to be with you into issue number two, at the very least, if this is a four issue awesome. limited series, I'm going to, I'm going to say they're with you for the series after issue number one. Yeah. So I do think your battle is just getting people to, uh, pay attention and dive yeah. in and commit it's, you it's, know, it's before reading, yeah, and yeah, then move beyond the Cthulhu. As, as marketing, marketing, marketing. I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I wanted to use really, it comes down to I wanted to use the deep ones, yeah, and you can't use the deep yep. ones without including no. um, the mythos. I mean, I could have used Dagon, but people don't know who Dagon is, really. I don't yeah. think, unless they're really the into movie. Cthulhu, yeah, right, yeah. only because only of because Gordon, of the, the Stuart Gordon movie, like that yeah. was a weirdly uh influential movie i watched it was one of those i didn't realize it was Stuart gordon i rented it oh so <laughs> i actually got it from um i bought a, there was a dvd this was before a deep blue sea sequels actually existed um there was only the first deep blue sea movie and then i stumbled there's a deep on blue eBay. sea sequel with there's thomas two. jane there's up to three no not with thomas jane <laughs> but, <laughs> but there jane are movie, two yeah. dr- no oh yeah the oh. first one is the first yeah, yeah, one yeah, is, yeah. but okay. they've ma- they they made a Deep Blue Sea two and a Deep Blue Sea three that oh, were straight totally to DVD, straight to video. Uh, yeah. And many, I'm with many you, years Dallas. later, I totally missed it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, number two is horrible, and number three is kind of good. Like number three is kind of like good in all those like wrong ways where you're like, ooh, yeah. watch this with a bunch of friends. It's not even just bad, it's just good in like weird ways. So it's like it's a fun yeah. watch um for, for that reason. But before those had actually come out, Deep Blue Sea had come out, and I stumbled upon a DVD on eBay from South Korea that was Deep Blue Sea 3 with a bunch of South Korean characters all over it. And I was like, what the? Fuck? Okay. So I bought it. It turns out it was their packaging of the Dagon movie. Uh, and so oh, interesting. I, I watched it, as, and I have no fucking idea what they call Deep Blue Sea 2 over there, but apparently they also <laughs> took some other aquatic themed something. And, sh- and called it Deep Blue Sea 2. And so this was Deep Blue Sea 3. And that was where I watched Dagon. And I was like, what is this movie? It's not huh. a Deep Blue Sea movie. There's like a shark for no. three <laughs> seconds at the very end, like for like two frames. Um, I don't know if you remember like that one moment at the very end, there's a shark yeah, yeah. Um, that yeah. jumps out of nowhere and, 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 and eats someone. But it's just like, what? Sam Jackson, and I, was like, I think. Oh. Yeah. I, I, well, for the first one, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I had to look up the movie and then realized it was Stuart Gordon, the reanimator guy. And I was like, this is incredible. So it weirdly left a, uh, an impact on me. And sci-fi I know about movie. It a lot because of that. But right. Yeah, but it was a sci-fi movie yeah. though, right? But um, the deep ones do, 
through all the mythos now, through, through everybody the doing their thing, yeah. the deep ones do tend to work loosely for Cthulhu. So I was like, okay, okay. we yeah. could we yeah. can bring them in. I can use an entity right. that people know and yeah. and can gravitate towards, and then you know, it's we'll smart. It's smart. use them in it's, the way. It's, yeah, it's right. A great way to lead right. people into the world. So yeah. So what's on there now is JB Panotis. He is out of that's a print that he did. He's out of the Philippines. He's a great artist. He's young. He's hungry. And um, P I N O D A S P A N O T E S Panotis. Panotis. Okay. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right there. He, he's great, yeah. and he wanted to do something that was film noirish. So yeah. I gave him a bunch of posters of like the big sleep and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. some other ones that were of Humphrey Bogart. Yeah. Right. And these are yeah. our two main characters, by the way, guys, uh, we didn't, mm -hmm. we didn't stop yeah. to really uh, pay attention, but these are, this is our detective um, in Frank uh, Solomon, I'm, I'm not, Frank Solomon. I'm not going to reveal anything about the baby part. You're just going to have to read it to find out. But this right. is how yep. we meet him. <laughs> is yep. He is he is this adult man, <laughs> grown ass yep. man. Um, and 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 her name? What's her name? His uh, that's Pearl Jackson. I, I, Pearl. And Pearl I actually Jackson. I I struggled with calling her Pearl because I didn't want it to sound too old, right? <laughs> okay. okay. Like from the 1930s. <laughs> and obviously yeah. I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a white guy so i wanted to make sure yeah. that I, I represented her right so morgan right. um i don't know if you know morgan and dan you know danny quick obviously because uh right from yes. Ace, yes. that does ace blade and then yep. his writing partner morgan who does lumberjacks and morgan actually went over the script and said no she's great she's great i love okay. the name and so we're like cool now for issue two, well, not for issue two, but issue three and four, I'm on the search. I want to find a, a black girl that grew up that was an adult in the 90s mm -hmm. that can just, I just want to have somebody to talk to to make sure that my lingo and that um, her attitude is right. right. I don't want to yeah. like think, not just because one, she's female. I'm not. You know what I mean? Right. Two, she's mm -hmm. black. I'm obviously not. So I want to make sure that, that, that I get her, her, I, I have ideas of who she is. Now I got to make sure that I express it the way she would express it. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. Right. Just, just go yeah, watch an episode of uh, any of the black sitcoms from the nineties. You'll be good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say Pearl Jackson has that very like Jackie Brown kind of feel. In, yeah. In the it movie, is a little, you know, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. funny that you say that because I did have oh, Foxy but... Brown in my mind um, mm -hmm. as I wrote Foxy her. Brown, you Jackie know. Brown, right? All the, all the, yes. all the every, every it's, it's, it's a Tarantino was riffing off of you're the Foxy required Brown. to yeah. have Foxy Brown in mind when yeah. you're creating a black character. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I mean, as as a white guy, that's pretty much what we have in mind. It's like well, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. that's our exposure. <laughs> we right. have Foxy Brown. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great print um and then i think that is These basically all we just go, go through the tiers yep all the different yep. you have, of course have the enamel pin of yep. uh yes. one of the the deep ones that enamel pin deep i ones. thought i was doing i had thought about rewards and i was like i'm gonna do it now i'm gonna do a pin no one does a pin oh yeah. And I went and I found this company. I did a pen. Yeah. And then I go in, I talk to Greg Smith. He's like, everybody does a pen. I'm like, oh. Pen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the first 10 is cool. Pen. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. First 10 is. Um... So John Horsley came up with that concept. And that is you get one of the first printed copies. And so I'm working with Color Vision. Okay. Told him the concept. They're like. Perfect. We will box up the first 10 in its own box. And those will be your first 10 of cover A, your first 10 of cover B right off the printing press. And then that's what you get. You get, And then we'll, we, I will hand draw on one of 10, two of 10, three of 10, and then right. sign it. And then you get a sticker that it's a holographic sticker. Like you can see it in the bottom left uh, who's on the, the cover. Print, who's the printer? Oh, yeah, yeah. Color vision. Color vision. Out of, I think it's Omaha. Okay. Could be Kentucky. I get it mixed up, okay. but um, yeah. they are uh, wonderful to work with. 
And yeah, so you get that. And so actually our matching set for cover A, cover B, and you get them. So you get one, mm-hmm. one of 10, one in 10 of cover A and cover B mm-hmm. and two of 10 of two of 10 cover A, gone, sold out the first day. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice I thought nice. it was, G- I, Johnny was genius when he came up with that one. That, that, that is a very good one, actually. That's, that's smart. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to have to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to think off. about stealing that. <laughs> yeah. You should steal that. You should yeah, steal that. I, I thought it was genius. I, the only thing I wish, mm. I wish I didn't even do the single issues, just done the matching set for the variants because that's what everybody wanted. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. I could yeah, see yeah. that. I could totally see that. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, then you get. Yeah. Cause if you, you know, want to, you, 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 you want to, you want to collect all the cover. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, the, the one I'm surprised is the um, the prints don't move, and I thought the Ron Randall prints would be like flying mm. off the shelf because that thing is so cool looking. And I, it is very cool looking. I will say, I think prints do better as uh, stretch goals. Um, yeah. Versus, yeah. And this because it's it just it's just that extra little thing you can insert into packages, and of course, digital people yeah. can get, yeah. just get the digital image. Um, yep. You know, so you send them a digital print, so everyone can partake of a print on a stretch goal, but I don't think prints have a lot of value to people often. Um, yeah. at least not on Kickstarter. Yeah, it so it's like a stretch goal. It's fun. And you're like, Oh, bonus extra. I don't even have to like buy more, but in terms of like, here's another tier and you've got to, you know, contribute all this extra money. What's... I don't know. There is something about, even though prints do really well at conventions, I, they probably yeah. aren't as valued on Kickstarter for some reason. Yeah, you're probably right. And well, the nice thing is, is, once this one goes through and we start the mm. second one, the second Kickstarter, I'll have all this extra material to be able to throw in, you know, mm-hmm. which will be nice. Yep. So people That's who nice. need to catch up, catch up stuff. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Catch up tears. Um, yep. Any other, anything else we should highlight? On See, the, page? The, uh, the, the other one that does really well is if you go da- if you go back up is the um, sealed goodie bag which is ah, that go. one right there for 75. That one has been doing pretty well. And you get a sealed goodie bag that is Nearly the everything. cover. Yep. Is, yeah, it's almost everything. You get a magnet, you get a coaster, you get the printed bag, you get the holographic stickers, you mm. get cover A, cover B, all the digital downloads, the Ron Randall print, the JB Pinotis print, and the wow. Deep One Enamel pen. The only thing you're not getting is the first 10. Right, right. Right. That's great. So that, that's that's a, that's a good those. deal. That yeah. one seems to to go really well. Um, nice. I wish it. I, you know, they they've mentioned one thing I've heard about Kickstarter is yeah. you know it's it's the lowest and the highest tiers that always seem to do the best. Where it's like whereas this all the stuff in between. I don't know if it's because people just get muddled with it, where yeah. they're just sort of like they don't understand exactly what it is or what the value of it is. Yeah. But they understand seventy five bucks gets you fucking everything, and they're like great. Yeah. And or you're just getting the issue, and it's, or something it's like be- the first ten is yeah, yeah. And it's below a hundred, so it's not blowing right. your your pocketbook. Right. It's something you can right. deal with, right. and then right. yeah, then you can go from there. We'll, we'll see how crazy it is when once all four issues are, are, are you're on like issue four and the everything yeah. goodie bag that that might have to go above 75 at that point. But we'll see. Right. Right. Because then it's like you get print. Hey, you get print. You get, you're you know, right. issue one, issue right. two, issue. Yeah. Right. 150 right. bucks. <laughs> right. Who knows? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the times when people have been around for a long time, it's one of the reasons why I. Sometimes I skip Kickstarters just because I'm like, oh, I'm I'm overextended. I, I'll I'll yep. get this creator when, on their next one, you know, and I'll catch up. Yeah. But if you do that too often, by the time you're catching up, you're catching up for this kind of crazy lump sum because there's yeah. just so much that has been dropped since then, and you're like, oh, what have I done? I should have paced myself. I should have been getting them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> more often because now now I want all this shit, but it is going to cost me like an arm and a leg to get it. Yeah. So. And it's funny that you said because because things happen and you have to think. And the other day I wrote a haiku, and you laughed because yeah. you 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 were like, I was like, man, who cancels a four dollar pledge? I mean, it's four bucks and I didn't think about it and it didn't bother me. I mean, it really didn't. I was just curious of the mentality, but you're like, well, you don't really know. He could have canceled like everything and just kind of went through because you don't know what's going on. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know what? That's, that's right. And then I wrote, and then I, I wrote the haiku because it just made me laugh. And then, um, but I had to think about it and it's, but it's true, you know, and it's the lowest to the highest and you kind of have to deal. Cause now I'm like, maybe I did too many tears. Maybe I should just do like a goodie bag 
and then mm -hmm. <clears throat> just add the prints into the goodie bag. Depending on, yeah. on what your back, I mean, over time, your back catalog is going to get so pronounced if you, if you yeah. survive and keep going and keep doing this in multiple series. And, you know, because there are some creators out there like a Travis Gibb or a Russell Nolte or people who have like, you know, it's like, I, I now have 12 graphic novels and 20 novels and <laughs> right. blah, blah, blah. And it gets to the point where they just have this sort of almost a la carte way of doing it where you're like, you're pledging for one book. And then when yep. you put in your survey, you're just going to tell me which of these 50 fucking books that is. Yep. Like, it yeah. doesn't matter. You're just going to pledge for one or two or three or four or 10. And you just can. And so there's tons of tiers, but they're all super simple in their way yeah. in that it's yeah. really just about how many books do you want? And when we do the survey, you're going to tell me, you know, what that what your shopping cart actually looks like you know, of yeah. your five books, what, what you yeah. chose there. Yeah. Um, but it can get very messy um, over time. But when you're starting out, I have kind of the same instinct right now. Whereas I like, I love that first 10 idea. I'm going to, I'm going to definitely look into that. Uh, but <laughs> dude, in off, general, dude, I'm, 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 thank you. Um, I, I'm like <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm like, I, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I will very unabashedly rip you off. Oh yes, one hundred percent. Dude, like, oh, I feel cool. like it's I'm there for you off with credit. Like, yeah, people, like, I, I gotta, I gotta steal. Well, and also, people love to share ideas in this community. That's, that is yeah. part of the idea. It's like, if it's a That's good true. idea yep. and it works, everyone, please take part in it. Seems um, to work. It seems to work. And but yeah, I'm also being very like, I'm definitely trying to keep my tiers as controlled and contained as possible. Where it's like super simple, you know, keep a simple, stupid kind of a thing. Where it's just like. Yep. Digital books, physical books, the alternate covers, a few bells and whistle. But then a lot of the things I'm saving for stretch goals, like if I want to do a bookmark sticker set, um, yeah. you know, uh, anything like a print or something like that. It's like, OK, but maybe those will be stretch goals, not so much muddying up the waters on the tiers. The tiers will be the bigger items. I'm, I'm going to have a T-shirt, I'm like a couple things outside of the books yeah. itself. Um, but for the most part, I'm just, I'm going to try and keep this first one because it's the first book. We don't actually have that much to give. So like, keep it that way and just let, yeah. but then also allow for something that can be a bigger tier so that people can drop more money and get a few more things. Um, but then, yeah, that tends to be the best way to do it for as long as you can do it. Eventually you're going to get to the point where you just have so much shit that, you know, um, yeah. at yeah. the very least the yeah. add on, that's what add ons are for, right? Is like, yep. then people can the add -on pick for... a tier that's simple. And then start a la carting it like like a crazy person you, and decide everything they want. Yeah. There's a part of me that wants to, when I do the second issue, hire somebody to write out the Kickstarter. It is so much work. Not a bad idea. It is yes. so much work. <laughs> I, I yeah. do not doubt it. Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of it. And I keep saying this is going to be like I said, two weeks ago, it was going to be up in a week. And it, of course, it's still not. <laughs> and that's part of the thing is I'm just like, oh. I mean, because you, and you do think you're right. done. That is the most. You think important. you're. Yeah, I know. You think you're done, and then you're not. And someone go. Someone comes along, and they tear it apart, and said, "You you missed this. You didn't do this. You didn't do that." And it's just like, oh shit. And then you're like, oh fuck you. And then you're like, oh shit. They're right about all of that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I will have to have a, a short because I mean, once it's been approved by Kickstarter, I'll have the pre-launch page up and that gives you a little bit of time to like send yeah. it out to people, the link and be like feedback. What do you think? And I'll definitely be dropping that in, the, in our Facebook, our shared Facebook group. Nice. So, you know, feel free to uh, weigh in when the time Maybe comes. Can join. Oh, wait. Hey, He's guy, not guy. on. Hey, this Pressure. guy. This guy. What is this? WWE all of a sudden? People's <laughs> <Tag> elbow. <baby. laughs> <laughs> we are not sponsored by it. facebook but or by meta but we should be yeah <laughs> right soon, you should soon. you definitely should be exactly Very soon. meta everyone we bring on will be like are you on facebook you should be on facebook that's right you should be if you're out it's there the aren't you meta the metaverse it's the way we the know you're it's so meta. Um, guy. Uh -huh. yeah uh so dallas <laughs> i think we're at the point let's start talking about the book yeah. and the wines we paired it with so um Shall I go first or do you want to go first? Uh, I think I did first last time. You go for it. I think you did go first last time. Okay. Yeah. So for me, as, as you've noticed, as I've been sitting here sipping, I did do a white wine. Shocking. Um, I, shocking. It is kind of shocking, actually. I don't do whites that often. Um, I'm still more of a red guy than a white guy, but uh, my white palette and my rosé palette has definitely been expanding in, in mm -hmm. the past, like I'd say, you know, year, year and a half, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've definitely been... So for this book... You know, one, 
Ramsey's art has it, the story itself. There's a it is dark in its way. It is horrific in its way. There is death. Um, there there is murder. Um, there are monsters, real real monsters. Um, but at the same time, there is a a lightness to the script. There is a the way in which everything goes down, even the killing when it happens to some degree. There's a certain whimsy to it. There's a certain almost black comedy going on. I mean, it's called Supernatural Baby Detective. You know, it's not going to be like <laughs> that super, you know, this is not the killing joke. This is not the Dark Knight Returns, right? It's mm -hmm. never going to be um, something like Supernatural Baby Detective. And even where it goes, he, uh, as, as Kenrick said, at first he thought he was going to do something like, look who's talking um, with, with, with the twist. Um, and that's not where th what this does, but at the same time, we are talking about a baby. Uh, I'm not going to reveal where it goes. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold back from, from saying anything too specific about our supernatural <laughs> baby detective and how we get there, but we do get there. And there's an element of that, that even while I was reading it, you know, it's, it's a fast read in its way. There's a lot that happens yep. in the first issue, but it is definitely a one sitting. You're not, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's engrossing the action really like it does not waste a lot of time on setup. Like you are go, go. It, there's like two, three pages where they're just sort of like, here's the case. I've got to go look into this case. Then boom, he's off and he's going mm -hmm. and he gets yep. to, he starts meeting these mysterious characters. He goes to this mysterious Island. Then he starts seeing all these weird, horrific things. I mean, it's just like, go, go, go. It's a little bit like a not safe for work Scooby-Doo in its way in that, <laughs> you know, it's got, but it has no, that true. almost that's like Hannah, Bar yeah. Hannah Barbera e cart Saturday morning like cartoon that. flavor to it. Um, where it gets much more serious. like if people actually died in Scooby-Doo and the murders yeah. were, you got to see the murders and you got, and there were also real monsters, not just people in suits, you know, that's <laughs> where this comic kind of goes. And it sat, I think, tonally right in there. So a, a red or especially a deeper, darker red, just, I was like, Have you, that's just too serious. Like there's something about this comic and the tone where it's like, there is, there is that black comedy and that whimsy and that frivolity to it. Um, so I, like that you see I that. went for something, yeah. So I went for something that was going to be a nice, rich white. And, uh, where I actually went was, I don't know if anyone's going to have heard of this one. This, this is a grape I have heard of. This is actually my very first bottle. I think I've ever had of this particular grape, but it is called Falangina mm -hmm. and it is an Italian white. It is native to Italy. It's an indigenous Italian grape. It is from, uh, the Campania or Arpina region. Uh, those are the two major places where it grows. It is centuries old. It's got a ton of history. It just is not a grape that's been in, uh, exported over to other countries very often, uh, especially in the modern era. Although it has a very, like it has a great rep, the Campania or Re, uh, Urpina region. There is a, there's a quote, there's a really famous quote about wine uh, in Vino Veritas by uh, Pliny the Elder. Uh, in, in wine, there is truth, right? And a lot of people have heard that in Vino Veritas uh, kind of Latin quote. Um, and he was talking specifically about the wines from the Urpina region when he said that quote, where he was so in love with them. And he, and he was one of those first true like wine lover gastromes right. of sort of what became the modern world um, from, from, from that era. And so I love that this grape had all this history to begin with. And, you know, we're dealing with a comic that has these ancient creatures and like Cthulhu mythos and things like that. And I'm like, OK, Go so, on. you know, let, let, let's get a grape with some history and a name like a name that is spelled in a way that would make Cthulhu proud. Let me tell you, um, it, you pronounce it Falangina. It, F A L A N G H I N A. Like it's a nice Cthulhu sounding looking and sounding word. Um, but it is one of those uh, grapes that has been getting more and more popular in very, very recent years, especially overseas. Uh, a lot of people have gone over there. Um, a lot of the markets have started to embrace kind of these native grapes to places because like we've all had tons of Cabernet Sauvignon. We've all, we've all had tons of Merlot, tons of even with things like Sangiovese, which is also uh, native to Italy. But at the same time, we, we've we've had a lot of that. We've had a lot of Chianti. We've had a lot of all these things. So now we're like, what else you got? You know, it's like, and yeah. Falangina is one of them that's kind of coming up in the world. Um, and we're getting more exposure over here. And this is a wine 
that oh absolutely and you can if you go to a wine shop you can ask for it and they will probably whether it's from campania or whether it's from arpina one of those two places they will probably have some and this is a it's a little more like you can see it's got a little bit of golden straw color to it it's not super deep um it's not i don't believe this was even uh, oak aged or anything like that or if it was it was probably like neutral oak or something actually i have some notes here do i have anything about the oak aging on this bad boy no so this was uh yep nope so this is so this is not oak aged but it still comes out with this little bit of golden hue to it and it definitely has this kind of so you get a lot of those like peach nectarine uh flavors and scents mm -hmm on it so you, that's sort of the fruit forward part of it a touch of citrus and then there's absolutely that little bit of hay or straw you know maybe like lemongrassy type flavors underneath or barnyard funkiness uh is another yeah. way to kind of think about it where you just get that it's just like on the nose it's just like smelling like if you go into a barnyard you've got those dried hay stacks and that like that is a very like that's a scent you recognize the moment you smell yeah. it and it's definitely it's not overpowering in the wine but it's in the wine and the best part is that hay type uh scent is often call uh caused by this thing called brett or bretomyces if i'm if i'm getting all the um <laughs> syllables in that i think it's bretomyces which is uh, a chemical that's in there that if it's overpowering that and a lot of like natural wine gets too much brett in it uh very organic like natty natural wine and that starts to smell a little poopy and a little baby diapery if it goes overkill so you also have that where and that's when the wine that's when you basically are like okay you 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 fucked that you screwed this up this is not a good wine anymore <laughs> um but plenty of natural wine can often go a little over overkill in that um, but this has a touch of it, so you just get the hayness, and it doesn't quite go to the manure side of it, which is where huh. what happens if it, if it if it tilts too far in that yeah. direction and it's unbalanced. So I like I also like the idea that you know I might have gone for something like a Roussan or a Marsan, which are French var white varietals, which tend to also have that barnyard funk in them, but usually balanced well. But I wanted something that had some of that scent. With, I mean, it's Supernatural Baby Detective. I was like, you know what? People always say it smells like baby diapers. So if, when it's bad. <laughs> so I'm like, let me have a touch of that in here. Something that I still enjoy because I'm enjoying this comic. I don't want something that challenges me in that way. Um, yeah. But we'll go with that. So this Falangina, it's got just the right amount of body. It's not, it's not super unctuous. It's not cloying in any way. But it's got more body than other whites. It's got a little bit of depth and golden hue. A little bit of that barnyard funk. Um, and then otherwise, it's just a nice fruit forward. Um, there is some great acidity, great minerality, but all sort of medium. It's like nothing that's overpowering, nothing that's under. It's just, it's this nice middle of the road white with just nice amount of fruit, nice amount of something else in there to give it some complexity. And so, yeah, this is my guy for uh, Supernatural Baby Detective. I like it. Nice. All right. Yeah, curiously enough, we are uh, in the same sort of vein. Um, and so I ditto and echo a lot of your responses um, to the piece. Uh, I kept coming back to the idea of this piece being cartoon noir. Yes. Uh, along the lines of what Dave was saying, it has that sort of feel of uh, a, a graduated uh, Scooby-Doo mysteries kind of thing. I like that. Which, you know, which is rooted in, in film noir. It's, it's a page turn. Oh, yeah. It is, you know... It's it's a kind of world that you're dropped in and you're sort of immersed or submerged to a certain degree, and it's it's uh, it's very dense, um, but also very you know very palatable um, and accessible. Uh, and I think based on what you do with uh, EB and the sort of um, palette tease is is uh you're doing at the end of, of this first episode um i can tell the world's going to take off it's going to expand into sort of directions that you know for fans of the cthulhu kind of mythos probably it, it's going to be a diversion for sure if they're thinking this is going to be kind of you know core cthulhu kind of mythos um and so i use that as my um on ramp into uh, the, the wine. I did go for a white, of course, 
I knew I wanted something that could stand next to the sobs and your, um, you know, your Pinot Grigios, you know, the sort of big name white wines. Um, but I also wanted something that was a little kind of peppery in a weird way. Um, and I knew I had to find a white that um, was sort of uncommon to a certain degree. I think there are only about 70, 750 acres uh, uh, where this particular grape, and it is a full um, single grape varietal. Um, uh, so the grape I chose is Italian from the region of Abruzzo, um, which is you know very famous for a, a lot of its different whites, uh, white grapes. Um, this particular grape uh, was very common and very popular for hundreds of years, uh, but mysteriously sort of fell out of fashion um, about a hundred years ago. Uh, and it had its sort of rebirth and resurgence in the nineties. Um, again, it's an Italian white. Um, so generally um, from this particular region of Abruzzo, you'll find whites that are very clean and have high uh, minerality. Uh, this guy in particular, uh, on the nose, you get almond, you get pear. Um, on the palate, there's it's it's very dry. Um, the acidity was sort of mid-level, medium, and much like the sort of um, the, the fear factor in your piece. It's kind of it's it seems rather innocuous uh, for the mm -hmm. first act, uh, first act and a half even, um, and then sort of picks right up and takes you to a place you we're not expecting, um, not to give too much away. Uh, and the same holds true for this wine. Uh, I chose the, um, and it is an organic grape, fully organic or organic wine here. Um, the grape itself is the Pecorino, um, which is- <laughs> I can see David like going, mm, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, Pecorino or Trebbiano? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is the Pecorino. I love it. And, uh, you know, the Pecorino did, it, it, it had it had its resurgence in the 90s after, you know, going out of fashion for years in favor of things like the Sauv and the Pinot. Um, and uh, it is by uh, the Fudo Antico. Um, this is the Tia di Chieti uh, Pecorino. It is a 20, this is a 19. Um, it is surprisingly potent. Uh, it is a full <laughs> body on the palate. It is, it, it, again, it's it's like 12 bucks a bottle. So the price point's not crazy. Um, yeah. But it, it is a, a, it's it. a, yeah, right. It's a, <laughs> it's a mouthful. It's an experience. I will say like, it, it, I'm, I'm thoroughly surprised and impressed uh, with it, awesome. uh, you know, much like your piece here. So, yeah. Cool. That's my guy. I'm so happy you guys liked what you read. I'm always nervous because, yes. you know, which I'm okay if people don't like it, but mm. the fact that you guys of course. didn't do it and actually <laughs> thought about right. it was like, and, oh. And I think you can tell too when people, because like, there's always that time, like, you know, they're, they're saying, they're not saying bad things, but you can also tell right, they're right. dancing around, not really yeah. saying anything yeah. particularly nice either. Right. And so you're just sort yeah. of like, they're talking like, about Yeah, ooh, your comic is so completed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the colors. I love these colors, and you're like, I love these colors. I mean, thank yeah. you. Wait, thank you. But you know, anything else? Anything else? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I will also say on Dallas's point, like just to repeat one last time, like that where you take this first issue with the the Easter Bunny um, killer, and where we leave off with the Supernatural Baby Detective, it really it sets everything up in a way where it's just if it's for you at all, if this concept and the pages and the, the, the sneak peeks you just saw when we shared our screen and thing like that, if this sounds like something you might like, like yeah. you will be in like Flynn if you read the first issue. Yeah. It yeah. just takes you to a point where you're like, yeah. I mean, I'm part of me is just sort of like, I would rather I had read this as a trade paperback because then I wouldn't have like left sure. it off like right at that moment. Um, right. But rather than having to wait. But at the same time, I will also say I've read comics all my life and comics have made me like I say that, but I'm actually kind of joking because comics have definitely trained my brain to wait for shit <laughs> where well, yeah. it's just sort of three things in chapters. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you this. If everything works out, and we fund, once we fund, then we start the set, like the second issue is written. 
Yeah. That Kickstarter should start in April. Okay. So it, it, it's like we are, we have all the dates You'll ready to go. Filling and rolling in, yeah. you know, to the yeah. next one. Kind so of April yeah, yeah. and then next August, I think, and then February the after one? that. Yeah. Yep. And, then and I, I will, like, I, I will caution the, uh, the audience on. this yep. too. I, I will yep. say this to anyone out there who is on the fence about any sort of Cthulhu mythos. If you've tired, if you reach that critical mass point, just do me a favor and take a gander at EB, the EB images. Just take a gander <laughs> at the bunny mask killer images and imagine where that goes and i think yep. it might pull you yep. into this world the the thing with so. eb is funny is that mask is the 1980s easter bunny mask that you would get yep. for halloween yep. that's right yeah which is it's, why it's, it's right off of that pink, pink, pink which is and all. <laughs> right yeah yeah it's 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 a ubiquitous image but that right. image alone does why it so well, though, something yeah. in in the best this, yeah. you know sort of audience there are whole generations so. that you know Absolutely. even if we don't recognize it as such like it's yeah. so familiar looking yeah. that it's, uh it, it, it's really easy to climb onto yeah 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 i was like i need that mask <laughs> Yeah. And I actually had a, we That's went deep idea. into the archives looking for images of that mask. And then we're like, oh, we found so many of them. And they're creepy then. Yeah. And we're like, yeah. oh, how is nobody That's using this mask? Is, I mean, the <laughs> fact that, I mean, even when you learn things like, you know, the the John Carpenter Halloween mask was a mold of William Shatner. Shatner's face. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like masks are always, there's something like, there's a reason why. You know, even in like Point Break, when they're all wearing president masks and things like that, like it's yeah. creepy as fuck. It's always creepy yeah. when people wear masks, no matter what the mask is of. Yeah. It's well, just there's something uncanny about them that uh, when I first wrote them, Valley territory. Yeah, when I first wrote them, I thought Rorschach. That's how I thought the mask yeah. might be, yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's ever changing uh, and his mood might change. But then I was like, it just doesn't fit because then I started thinking V for Vendetta, yeah. and that the fact that the masks never that. It never changes, it never but it fits. Right. So the exp yeah, the expression never really changes, but it fits so well for every scene. You're like, right? Oh yeah, that that right. this will work. This will work really well. well <laughs> one of the things people love about the Beef of Vendetta movie, the the kudos they give to um, I'm going to blank on the actor's name, the actor from the Ma the Matrix and yeah. uh, Lord of the Rings that played him. Uh, the Australian actor, I forget his name. Wow. I'm blanking on it, but him. A lot of people give him credit because he has to Hugo play Weaving. that whole role with uh, no Hugo expression. Weaving. It's just the Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving yep. has to use body guy. language and like head tilts and language like that. But the his face is just that mask, which is yeah. utterly yeah. one expression forever, always, and yet he can communicate everything he's thinking and going through by body language and tone of voice with and coupled with how that mask looks uh -huh. and that yeah. shifts what like what that character is coming across as so yeah that's always yeah a, an i honestly can't story. wait for issue two to come out so we can talk more about the relationship with thing with different things uh, with different characters yeah yeah oh yeah yeah just yeah. different characters as a whole because i'm just like there's so much there that i haven't been able to express yes you got to set up <laughs> as mentioned before this is yeah this is the setup uh it's a it's a great setup but you will be hooked I appreciate in it. four issues guys it's not even that that, yeah. that is not a huge commitment that is something nope. that will finish um yep. and yeah and i think you're doing like even though i know you're you're anxious and stressed out like you are already <laughs> at a funded level that is right. like it's so rare not to fund if you've already made it to to where you are right now. Um, oh, that's good. So, to hear. <laughs> I mean, do everything you need. To, I mean, part of it is like yeah. don't don't get complacent. Like do everything, no. do all the pushing, <laughs> keep pushing, pushing, pushing. But once almost everything that passes fifty percent succeeds um, by the no, ultimate end. A lot of it's going to be in the last three days, which is going to mm -hmm. kill you. But it is. It, it it will i know and your poor luckily heart. i'm your healthy to make it through this <laughs> <laughs> um, if this was march so, i'd be uh, dead <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly i, I was like make, make those stints earn their earn their place that's right earn their um, keep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh kenrick we also asked you to bring on a comic yes. that you either have loved for a long long time or do yeah. love or are digging right now and then yep. uh, a beverage that you want to pair it with so what you got I will show you. It's been on so, screen this whole time. <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite characters growing up, and 
when I went to college back in the early 90s, became really my favorite character. It's Conan. Oh. Uh, and yes. the Savage Sword of Conan is the magazine style, even though it says um, Curtis, that is a Marvel imprint. Mm -hmm. And they did this to avoid the um, Comics Code Authority. Yeah. Uh, right? So well, they can do more I, violence. I love those. Yes. They can, they can yes. do more violence. They can say more language. They can show more yeah. sex. They can do anything they want because it's a magazine. And they were always in gas stations. I don't Not know if that's where you got them, but yes, I would always buy yeah. them at gas stations. Yeah. Oh, really? That's funny. Yes. So I love that comic. And Conan is meat. He is just meat and potatoes he is somebody that is violent he is in the things so if you're doing meat and potatoes a red there you go is always a nice. way to go look at this guy yes. you know how this so works very nice i went with a cab because um i love i love reds as a whole my favorite red of all time right now is probably um either the matthews red blend or the uh long shadows feather long shadows okay. feathers phenomenal but it's 75 dollars a bottle so right. it's not something i want to drink all the time but for this i wanted to bring something on um, because i have convinced tons of my friends to ditch the bottle and go box <laughs> because and this is this is 100 true i have been called so tafine um her friends have called me bitched me out because they have laughed at me for bringing a box wine yeah. And then fell in love with the box wine and then have bought many box wines since then. And they're yeah, mad at me yeah. because they're like, now I feel like trailer trash. But no, 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 my friend. <laughs> right. Box wine is not for the trailer anymore because this is a frenzy. I went with a Boda Mini. Nice. Let's see if I can get the come in uh -huh. at all. There, there you go. go. There it is. There it is. This is a cat yeah, from tough, Boda yeah. Mini from Boda Box. Boda Box is great. Uh, Black Box is great. Um, there are two companies that are doing it right. And um, this one in particular, their cab has won a ton of awards. And this little thing was only $7. And let me tell you, the taste, the texture has all the right mouthfeel. It always sounds weird. Nice. <laughs> the tannins are, are, are spot on. When I, when I take a deep breath, for some reason, it reminds me of my childhood. I I, I think of my swimming lessons. <laughs> Lots of wine of my, in your childhood. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what it is. I love it when wine so, is the, evocative of, of yeah, memories. Well, the Absolutely. olfactory yeah. is a huge memory sensory. Yes, that it's brings yes. Back it does. It does. More your than sense anything. Of smell is the, yeah, your sense of smell is the one sense that Absolutely. bypasses. Um, it's one of the reasons why it's so hard for us when we're smelling something like wine to break down what we're smelling that's right. is that's not the part yeah. of our brain that engages. It is yep. the recollection part of the brain that you're smell. And I don't know if that's because we use smell like all animals where it's like, you know, we other cat, other animals smell the pee of another animal and they're like danger, danger. And so yeah. it's instantly, it's not about knowing what it is. It's about the reaction. It's about what it suddenly pulls out of you. So yeah. we've always used scent to, know how we want to act and behave about things right. and so it goes right to your recollection center not your i smell cherries and strawberries <laughs> or anything like that like that's something what? we have to like stop our brain and force it to do and then of course we struggle with it because that's not yeah. what our sense of smell is meant to do well it's just weird red wine in particular like a cab for some reason always reminds me of my swimming lessons and so i think back of swimming and i took swimming lessons from when i was tiny mm -hmm. and by the time i was eight years old i had gone through all the life training exercises and so but they couldn't give me my uh uh lifeguard certification because i was too young yeah but I was, right. and i was scouted by private schools to join their swim team of course my mom didn't want to didn't want to do it because it was too expensive but it was oh, something okay, I was so not for at. a scholarship. <laughs> just, no, 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 just not for a scholarship. Pay us, pay us money. Just high school. Can join our <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, Conan is yeah. like legit one right. of my favorite characters of all time. This is a classic Boris Vallejo cover. The guy favorite. is ridiculous. Um, I have a ton of Conan comics. Yeah. And it just seems to go hand in hand to me, yeah. like in a perfect way. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Interesting. Yeah. Is there anything on that sort of newsprinty smell that comes from those magazine Conan 
uh, comics that might also I, sort of match. You know what's weird is I love the smell of the 70s. Oh, me so too. I have the oh. 60s and 70s comics, and you open them up like. Me too, man. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it's the age on that print or what they printed it's on like back the, in the day. Yeah, it's, I don't. It's the musk. It's got a so, sense. Here's yeah. the the classic oh, yeah. Frank Frazetta oh, umbrella oh, number oh, one. So oh yeah, bitch. and then the Neil Adams, one of the most famous covers of time. Uh -huh. You open these up, and they just have that musky. Instant. Probably shouldn't. Instant. Well, yeah, probably shouldn't mm -hmm. smell it, but yeah, it's it, definitely it's, toxic. I'm 49 years old. It brings my childhood back. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean, yeah. and I'll be. And it's like oh. And, and then the the work in these things. Yeah. I right. mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, that's the thing. I, I don't. So, go ahead, Dave. No, go ahead. Sorry. I was, I was just saying, say, that's the thing with these. <laughs> that is classic oh, right there. <laughs> we're, we're both too polite. <laughs> go for it. Okay. So I was just going to say the... Um, it's like walking into a used bookstore or also, you know, comics these days, they're always coated paper now mm -hmm. where yeah. it's either glossy or at least matte, you know, finish on the inside yeah. interiors. But it used to all be uncoated paper. And I think that's where so much of that, like aging uncoated paper, that's where so much of that scent comes from. I have some, some graded books. Like I have the first appearance of Harley Quinn up there. And I have Iron Man number one signed by Stan Lee that that I had graded, and I kind of regret it because I love reading comics. I love right. looking at comics. Um, exactly. The Harley Quinn, I'll, I'll I'll never crack open simply because that's actually my daughter's book. I don't, mm. but she's only she's turning ten tomorrow. Happy birthday, Ella! Um, so Happy I'm birthday, not Ella! Going, they, <laughs> I am not going to um, crack that one. That's that's hers. Yeah. You know. But she won't get it until she's after until she's older than eighteen. Because if I get her now, she'll crack it open and then yes. it'll get ruined. <laughs> so, right, right. I don't want that to happen. Look but, what happens when I get it wet, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I we we I have a ton of books. All my books, um, I I I don't spectate. I collect. Yeah. And so when I go and have something signed, they're like, "Do you want me to sign it to you?" And I'm like, "100. percent I want you to say my friend Kenrick. Are you kidding? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So. Uh, but I, I, the slab ones are cool just to have to keep, but at the same time, I really want them. Yeah. I want to smell it. And it's really the smell that does everything for yes. me. Yeah. Do you think that smell too? Cause you mentioned about the swimming lessons and, you know, mm -hmm. sw swimming pools and chlorophyll and things like that, like is or chloroform chlorophyll shit. Am chlorine. I saying the right word? Chlorine. chlorine. Thank you. Chlorine, I'm like, that sounds yeah. wrong. That sounds like I'm, <laughs> I'm not someone water. out. What's happening is. <laughs> All right, so chlorine, you can see how long it's been since I've been to a pool. Um, but uh, chlorine, like, is there, it, it could, is the scent somewhat reminiscent of, like, in the wine, too, in the box wine, like, is there that slight undercurrent of something chlorine? All red there? wine gives me that feeling and okay. has that, it, it's that acidic. It could just be the it, alcohol. Right? Yeah, yeah, or, or yeah, yeah sure. it, could it could be, be the alcohol. alcohol acidity. Yeah. yeah. And some more than others. And, it, you know, it's funny not to say, because Boda, Cheap in price, but not a cheap wine, right? I don't think. But um, the cheaper wine tends to have more of that nostalgic feeling. Okay. Even though I love yeah. like a really good wine, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like I like I said, like my favorite is probably that feather right now. Mm -hmm. um, right. But that's $75 a bottle. That does not give me the same feeling. That gives me like, oh, this tastes fucking delicious. And I want this to taste like $75 whoever a bottle. <laughs> is the wine. Yeah. I, whoever's a wine master, you are the woe man or man or whoever you are. I love you already. Right. And, right. but sometimes the, just some of something about it and it just, I love it. I actually love it because it just brings all these memories back, you know, that's super cool. And that's, yeah. and that's, I think good wine will do that because not only will it bring back childhood memories, but it brings back friendships, brings back, you know what? Every time I drink a Boda, I'm going to think of this episode. 
Yeah. I mean, I think <laughs> that's, that's, that's all, the sort of X for factor it. for most wine in that, you know, it is like, it's evocative. It is a sensory yeah. well, and It's meant to be a social you know? drink more Absolutely. than, more yeah. than a, than an alone drink. Right. So you usually yeah. have memories to go with that. Like something you ate or who you were with or what you were doing, where you were traveling, you know, you go to wine country and drink a lot of this wine, things like right. that. So it's yeah. usually in a special ish occasion um some kind of gathering so then you can you can have those memories as well and i wanted to mention too that you know uh, to kenrick's point on boxed wine premium boxed wine is a new ish thing but it is a big big thing right now in wine where a lot of very talented winemakers are getting into boxed wine and so you will actually likely especially if they're individual boxes like that find good boxed wine versus yeah. shitty boxed wine these days ah. because that is what they're doing who's what's the puppy's name uh, that is that is muffin <laughs> and she was supposed to be Tafine's dog and then she bought him but she like just wanted to hang out with me oh, so uh -huh. she become my dog cuz i would never name a dog oh. muffin but <laughs> she became my dog and she's sitting there whining so yeah, yeah. Pick her up, then she doesn't, you know, uh, then she gets man. down and then yeah, she's a good dog. Good, good, good. She loves but Boston yeah, as a, so <laughs> Boston Dairy. Uh so just to wrap up that thought, guys, buy box wine if you can find it, if you see it on the shelves mm -hmm. and whatnot. I mean, take a quick look. If it's a, like a three gallon box wine for ten dollars, that is not the premium box yeah, wine. Stay away from the friends, so, yeah. You know, <laughs> right. It, it's like <laughs> use use some logic in that, but there is a lot of premium <laughs> box wine out there now because bottles are a huge economic concern right now. It, they, it, a lot of energy to, it takes to make them, to transport the weight of them. And then wine actually is preserved better in boxes versus bottles anyway. Um, they're even coming up the bag, like the, what they line the boxes with, or, the, or if it's a, one of the big boxes with a bag inside of it, yeah. they're coming up with ways to let a little oxygen through because that's what a cork does really well is a little bit of oxygen gets to come through, which actually makes the wine age better. You don't want nothing to come through, but you want to control it in a very specific way. So a lot of the modern boxes are doing that so that you can have the best wine possible in a box. And they're so much more eco-friendly. You can recycle them when you're done. It's amazing. Well, so Dave's, Dave's all for the boxes. Box I'm, I'm a... I'm a little conservative no, on this see, issue. See, Dallas, like, mm, don't be a Dallas. This is this is what we need to get past. This is what we need to get past in the wine world. Let me tell you. Well, it took um, a long time to get past the cork versus the screw top. Screw top. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you know, we're but much 50 -50 and that's still that's There's still deba of, yeah. a big debate. It's still debatable, but it's not as quite as bad. I'm that's, telling you right now. It's become a secondary. It, it is the box wine that is out there nowadays is not the frenzy that your parents drink yeah. it's just not yeah yeah you know if you get a and and you, if you'll know by how you much get a you boda, you're good <laughs> yeah right you get mean, a boda box that, for me uh, is that good. like a glass worth in in one of those bodas like be this one is the boda mini and it, it's you can see it right here three. Oh, yeah yeah wow. three glasses they say oh <laughs> three ounce glass so three, i three had three glasses glass. of wine talking to you guys and i'm feeling good <laughs> feeling good well good you need to feel good for these uh remaining days on your kickstarter right. keep yeah. feeling good that's that's the place to stay in all right uh well thank you so much for being here kendrick yeah, it was amazing talking Thanks to you one me. last time guys Absolutely. And I'm going to put this on the screen real quick, but Supernatural oh, Baby Detective. Go. There you go. That is what you're looking for. Boom. You sent me the logo right before the show. I had to do something. I like know. I felt bad. I was like, oh, you ass. And I sent you nothing. And then because I was like, oh, here's a question. Blah, 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 send. And usually, I'm like, oh, what am I'm I doing? I'm usually good. My Photoshop skip, my Photoshop foo is pretty good. I, I will cobble together a nice thumbnail with what I have. Um, but yeah. now that you sent that, I'm like, well, that makes my life easy. So I, I thank you nice. heartily. Um, but Supernatural right. Baby Detective. Um, it has exactly, did I leave that? No, I did not. 15. How many more days do you have left on that? 15? 15? I have, I can tell you right now, I have 15 days to go as of today. But if this comes out next Monday, that's about next a week. Monday, so you're, so you're we'll, talking about like eight to nine days. 10 day, right? nine, yeah, yeah. Oh, All we're right. at 52 so guys. We got and a backer we, as we were doing this. We got him too. We got him a backer. <laughs> we got him too, but we'll <laughs> take credit for it. We're taking 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 credit for it. I think he's on the line and Tom's pairing show. Let's back this. 
Um, <laughs> so there will be a link down below directly to the Kickstarter. So just take a look at that if you're listening to this on the video. Um, if you're listening to this as a pod, we don't have a podcast quite yet. That's actually coming. And all these episodes will be turned into podcasts. If you're listening to this on a podcast, this is long over. But go look for issue two <laughs> or three. That will probably That's be right. happening by the time this is a podcast. Um, or whatever the hell. But anyway, else thank you so much, my man. Thank Close you. Thanks, Eric. Thank uh, you. So Thank much. you, Dallas. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate yeah, you guys. Same here. Ciao Thanks for now. We're ending it here. All ciao, right. ciao, everybody. <laughs>